Hello everybody, Michael the Librarian of Magic here, finding and cataloging the magical and pointing you to it. I am back here with a special video, this time to talk about a raft of nature documentaries that came out onto Disney Plus this uh, last week, the week of Friday, April the 3rd. Um, and uh, I just wanted to, I, I finally ca got caught up on those and watched them all. Um, and I wanted to discuss them and talk a little bit about uh, Disney Nature Studios, which is sort of the um, nature film wing of Walt Disney Studios. Um, and so I'm just going to jump straight into that and then give my thoughts on all of the films as well. Um, for reference, before I begin talking about these, uh, the films in question are uh, Disney Nature's um, Elephant, Diving, uh, Diving with Dolphins, in the Footsteps of Elephant, Penguin's Life on the Edge, and Dolphin Reef. Uh, I watched these five films. Um, I actually watched six because I watched the Disney nature film Penguin, which is uh, related to Penguin's Life on the Edge, but is not one of the, uh, wasn't released um, in, as a Disney original in the same time frame, but I did watch it because I hadn't seen it before and it's pertinent to um, that other film. So uh, I'll explain what I mean here in a second, but I wanted to uh, let you know those are the titles of the films in question um, in, in case you were wondering exactly what I'm talking about. So in uh, April of 2008, April 21st, 2008, Disney launched Disney Nature Studios, um, which is a uh, arm of theirs that they use for producing nature documentaries. Now, Walt Disney Studios have always had uh, a relationship with um, the nature film. Walt Disney himself was um, inspired and in very highly interested in nature and animals, and um, which is evident in a lot of the animated films uh, that focus on animals and so forth. But also um, back in Walt's time in the 50s and 60s, Disney made several live-action nature documentaries uh, in a series called True Life Adventures. They made films like The Living Desert, um, The Vanishing Prairie, Perry the, the Squirrel. Um, that are You can watch these on Disney+. Plus. They, they have them on there for the most part. They have the entire series. Um, and uh, they won some Oscars with those as well. Walt Disney won some Oscars for um, his work on those. And so that's something that the, the, the company has always done pretty much uh, through the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, they kind of stopped doing it for a while in the 80, 80s and 90s. In 2005, when the film March of the Penguins came out, the one narrated by Morgan Freeman, which came out to much acclaim, was very popular at the box office. Um, it did very well financially and also won uh, an Oscar and, um, you know, was sort of a big deal when it came out. Uh, then CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, uh, you know, in a, in a meeting with uh, shareholders and other creative types, had admitted that that should have been a Disney film. It felt like it should have been. It, it was the sort of content that uh, Disney should have been putting out. They had a history of working with nature films and so on, and they just weren't there to um, capitalize on that wave and instead, um, I believe that was Warner Brothers who distributed uh, March of the Penguins, if I remember correctly. Uh, anyway, it, regardless, it wasn't Disney. Uh, and eventually they did buy the distribution rights uh, to March of the Penguins uh, through their their um, studio Buena Vista Films, but uh, it was not originally produced by Disney and so on, and they, they regretted that. Um, so they decided to open up their own nature studio again and get going on that. Uh, aspect of Disney Walt Disney Studios. So in 2008, three years after March of the Penguins, they opened up Disney Nature and had planned a slate of films. Uh, and basically the way it's worked pretty much since then is every year around Earth Day um, in, you know, in the mid, mid to, to late April, uh, they will release, they have been releasing a new um, nature film or what they call an event film. Uh, based on some certain animal or region of the world or, or something like that, um, which is usually, uh, in the case of the big box office releases, is accompanied by a conservation campaign that raises money for whatever the subject of the documentary happens to be. 
uh, based, and then that they Disney donates money based on the number of tickets sold and so on to this conservation campaign, and also encouraging people to be aware of these various um, conservation uh, causes and how and how to be involved. So they're kind of kind of raising awareness and money as well. They usually give the films like a five to ten million dollar budget and have been pretty successful with the films that they've done so far on average, uh, averaging about $19 million at the box office. So most of them have been profitable to some extent or, you know, beneficial to the conservation campaigns in question to, to a, a decent extent. Uh, in 2008, when they launched the studio, the first film that they produced was a film called The Crimson Wing, Mystery of the Flamingos, uh, obviously about flamingos. That movie is on Disney+, Plus. Um, if anyone cares to view it. Uh, and then since then, they've pretty much done a movie a year, more or less, since 2008, uh, these event box office pictures. Now, obviously, this year, um, things have changed pretty dramatically. There is not a box office right now to speak of. So what Disney has done is taken uh, some films that they already had in distribution channels or that they'd already released in other regions of the world. Uh, some of these some of these movies get European releases before they get uh, U.S. releases. Disney Nature uh, as a studio is actually headquartered in Paris, France, and many of the filmmakers who work on these films or creatively concentrating on these films are European. They're from the UK or France or various places in Europe generally uh, and all over the world but the, 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 the studio is headquartered in Paris so some of these movies end up getting um, French debuts before they get US debuts or under, under other names and stuff like that but um, when they're released in the US like I said they're usually an event picture right around uh, Earth Day. Uh, and like I said, this year there there really isn't much of a box off to speak of, so Disney has decided to take some of the films that they've had uh, produced for this year, Elephant uh, in particular, which was slated to come out this year anyway, and The Dolphin Reef, which was um, in their distribution channels and slated to be released but had not yet been released, and instead they just release them on Disney Plus as streaming originals, Disney Plus originals. Uh, so those two documentaries came out on Disney Plus this week. That's kind of why all this is happening and where it's all coming from, and they released it to coincide with April and Earth Day and so on, as they normally would. Additionally, they released, and this is something that they've never done theatrically, to my knowledge, uh, with, with Dolphin Reef and uh, Elephant in particular, they released two uh, making of documentaries called In the Footsteps of Elephant and Diving with Dolphins. And uh, when I saw these in my queue, I thought they might have been special features or maybe like making of fluff pieces, kind of like a five to ten minute uh, go watch the documentary. But no, they're, they're feature length documentaries in their own right. Feature length making of documentaries as long as or in a couple of cases, I think maybe longer than the feature films that they are portraying. So I watched those as well. And then they also released a making of documentary for the film Penguin called Penguin's Life on the Edge. Now, Penguins, the, the Na Disney nature film Penguins, was released a couple of years ago, um, I think in 2016 or 17, something like that. I don't remember exactly. I should have wrote that in my notes, but I didn't. Regardless, it came out a few years ago. Um, they released also a making of documentary for that called Penguin's Life on the Edge, which is also with this clumping of nature films on Disney+. Plus. So I watched that as well, and in order to have context for that, I watched the film Penguins, which I had never seen before. So that's sort of a, a little bit of a backstory about what Disney Nature Studios is and how these films came to be on here and sort of a basic primer of what they are. So what were they like? Uh, did I enjoy them? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my thoughts. Um, I'll, I'll kind of go in order of least enjoyable to most enjoyable so I can kind of, you know, end on a high note. Um, the film, uh, Penguins, um, I, I watched that in order to watch Penguins Life on the Edge. Uh, Penguins, the feature film, the, the nature documentary, is about a, um, uh, I don't know what you call a grouping of penguins, like a rook, a rookery or a, a, a flock, um, a group of penguins in Antarctica, of uh, Adelie penguins, which are sort of slightly smaller 
or maybe half the size of emperor penguins that you may be uh, familiar with, like in March of the Penguins, for example. These are uh, a different species of penguins, but they also live in Antarctica. It follows around a couple of specific ones as they go through their life cycle. In the spring and summer months in Antarctica, they um, nest and mate and hatch chicks and then raise the chicks for a few months before winter rolls around so that the chicks are prepared to swim and migrate to a different area. And then they come, the, you know, the whole group comes back in droves. I mean, thousands, millions, um, almost, or a million, pretty, pretty much strong and uh, repeat the cycle all over again in the following year. So it, it really just tells the, the um, story of these penguins. Uh, it focuses in on a couple in specific, and um, one of the things that you'll uh, realize when you start watching these movies is Disney likes to give these animals names in these nature documentaries, and uh, as a result, the animals are anthropomorphized uh, to one degree or another in these films, uh, which is has pros and cons to it. On the pro side of things, they're trying to get uh, children and families interested in uh, nature material that they may not otherwise be interested in, um, and that can help. Um, but I also think there is kind of a con side to over-anthropomorphizing animals because they're animals and they have their own behaviors and they're not human beings. Um, and that is that is important to know. That's important to separate in these documentaries. It kind of dumbs it down to an extent when you do that too much and it also doesn't give the audience very much credit for having the ability to be interested in animals for animal sake and i think human beings in general are interested in animals that's why we have zoos and preserves and national parks and all kinds of places that people are always wanting to go uh to see animals and they're always interested just to see the animals for their own sake and that's what i feel like many nature documentaries would be better off doing is turning the, the camera on these animals and then maybe having some sort of educational um, narration underneath that uh, so that we can learn a few things about what's going on on screen. Um, and where these Disney documentaries are at their best, they do that. And where they are at their worst, they stray very far from that. And Penguins, unfortunately, does very often stray from that. Rather than informing us about what these animals are doing, uh, that pretty much only happens, I would say, for about a third of the film. And I would say two, about two-thirds of the film are really just... Um, Ed Helms as a narrator from all kinds of TV and, and movie projects, uh, basically ad-libbing the inner monologue of this penguin that they've named Steve, uh, and it sort of comes off like a silly America's Funniest Home Videos type of sketch. Uh, th they're, they're just sort of imagining the dialogue of Steve uh, for large chunks of the movie, um, and it's it's a little annoying to be, to be completely frank. Um, it's not Ed Helms' fault. That is certainly not a knock on him at all. He is doing what he's basically being directed to do, um, and he's doing a fine job of what he's being directed to do. He's a talented person, and he's he's doing his job here, but I'm annoyed that they're even asking him to do those things um, in the first place. So that's not really a knock on Ed, on Ed Helms, but that's what it is. Also, there are these really bad, in my opinion, music cues, like um, Ario Speedwagons can't fight this feeling when penguins are in their mating mood, or uh, White Snakes Here I Go Again when a penguin sets off for, you know, his, his migratory journey. Uh, it, it, it's really tonally bizarre. It undercuts the, the more harrowing moments when the penguins are trying to escape predators and things like that. There are orcas and sea lions and uh, dangers for these penguins that are tremendously, um, th the tone of it is tremendously all over the place because they've chosen this bizarre narration and uh, really cheesy music cues. And overall, it just, it just doesn't work. Um, it's just not a very good movie. It's not hardly informative at all. I didn't learn very much about a deli penguins, uh, that I, you know, could take away from this. I learned some, I'm, I'm not trying to be unfair to it. it. It didn't tell me nothing, but um, for nearly an hour and a half of my time, it, it didn't give me much. Um, by contrast, the making of documentary, Penguin's Life on the Edge, was highly informative. Uh, I learned a lot more about the penguins by the the telling of the story of how they tried to make this film in the first place. And um, it really also kind of put into sharp uh, focus the the 
hardship that it is to film on Antarctica and um, all of the things that these filmmakers had to go through. And it was a very difficult uh, shoot in many cases. They were dealing with lots of weird weather because the weather on Antarctica is pretty much always horrible. Um, and people had to be away from their families. They were filming on Christmas Eve, which in Antarctica is in the summertime, which is when you have to be able to film um, down in Antarctica. So there's, you know, it really goes into a lot of interesting detail and is highly worth watching. And if you are interested in learning more about the Adeli penguins and um, this beautiful and remote location in general, that that's really the movie to watch. Um, it, it's it it really um, is more ca compelling and captivating than basically most of uh, the feature length film, uh, which is a shame because the the footage that they brought back is incredible. Um, and they're showing places that most people will never go to in their lifetime to see anyway, um, and to, you know, take these people's extremely hard work and, you know, that's how you choose to edit together and direct it, it is really kind of a shame. But as far as the viewer is concerned, you still do get the benefit of what they went through because they made this making of documentary. And I'm really glad they did because it sort of salvages, um, the hard work that these people went through, in my opinion. So my verdict on this pair is uh, skip Penguins, but definitely watch um, Penguins Life on the Edge. It That is well worth your time. Moving on to Dolphin Reef um, and also Diving with Dolphins, the making of documentary of Dolphin Reef. Dolphin Reef is uh, a few steps better than uh, Penguins, uh, in my opinion. It is a lot more informative than penguins, for sure. I learned a lot of things in this movie about dolphins, about coral reefs, um, about various animals that live in those habitats, like cuttlefish and um, bump-headed parrotfish, uh, mantis shrimp, humpback whales. There's a lot of great stuff in this movie. It focuses on... It's sort of advertised as a movie about dolphins, and for the most part it is. It focuses on the story of this dolphin named Echo and his mother as she's trying to teach this juvenile dolphin behaviors that he needs in order to hunt and grow and learn how to be a dolphin. Um, it also focuses in on a humpback whale and her calf and how they're trying to um, migrate and do that safely and escape from predators and so on. And also focuses on a mantis shrimp who lives in a coral reef where the dolphins live. And, and through the mantis shrimp, we get to see different elements of how coral reefs work and how they thrive and what the balance of that ecosystem is. And all of that is very fascinating. Uh, I actually, on first blush, I watched uh, Dolphin Reef before I watched Diving with Dolphins. I enjoyed Dolphin Reef quite a bit. Um, and um, it, the visuals are beautiful. The narration by uh, Natalie Portman is very good. Uh, and, and highly informative. It's it's not nearly as uh, they don't they don't anthropomorphize nearly as much, although they still do. And there are there are pretty much none of these D Disney nature documentaries that don't. Unfortunately, with the anthropomorphization, that's one of the um, I would say bad takeaways that people took from March of the Penguins with this sort of narration. Let's make it more relatable so American audiences can digest it better. Um, and frankly, no nature documentary has been as financially or, or critically successful as March of the Penguins since March of the Penguins came out. So I think it's time to let go of the lessons that we learned from that and try something completely new. Um, and hopefully they will start working on that here in the future. Uh, but Dolphin Reef is sort of somewhere in between that. Uh, it does anthropomorphize uh, a little bit, far less than Penguins does. Um, as I say, there are some... Um, worthwhile things to learn here. So I did enjoy it. It went down a few notches in my estimation after I watched the making of documentary Diving with Dolphins only for a couple of reasons. Um, Diving with Dolphins, just like uh, Penguin's Life on the Edge, is a great making of documentary and really worth your time. Uh, it shows all of the different locations they had to go to to, to film these different animals and their habitats, and there, there were multiple locations. Uh, Hawaii, the Polynesian Islands, um, Florida, all of these different reefs uh, and, and dolphin habitats. Um, 
it's very interesting to see the filmmakers uh, do their work here, and it is hard work indeed. Um, you have to sort of wait for these animals to do their thing. You're getting very close to um, whales and sharks and being out of your element in the open ocean, and it takes highly trained um, and skilled uh, film crews to pull that sort of thing off. So the, the um, documentary is great and gives you a respect for what they were trying to do here. The thing that sort of annoyed me in in watching this, you know, reflecting on the uh, feature-length film is that in the feature-length movie, they, as I said before, are telling you the story of Echo and, you know, th there's this narrative thread that Echo is learning these t hunting techniques and his mother is teaching him these things and here's the life in the reef where they live. But you learn in the making of documentary that it's not the same dolphin throughout. They're not in the same location throughout. They're everywhere around the world with different dolphins filming them doing different things and they try to pass it off as this one narrative story. I would have much rather seen a movie with the exact same footage that they had um, in in Dolphin Reef and and just say, oh, now these are different dolphins in a different place and here's what they're doing and explaining their behavior rather than trying to tell this story about Echo, who's this fictionalized dolphin, so that we have some captivating through line or whatever. These animals don't need a storyline in order for us to um, understand what's going on or to be compelled by it. They just don't. Uh, it, it really is kind of frustrating um, that they keep trying to push these narrative threads because, you know, they don't trust audiences to be interested or to pick up on what's going on here. And it, it just isn't true. Uh, we watch nature documentaries on mass and go see animals all the time and pay good money to, to um, do so. And there's no reason why we wouldn't see any documentary that uh, treats its audience um with a little bit of intelligence. Um, so it, it is a little frustrating. The, the As I say, the pro side to that is they are trying to market things uh, to families and children a little bit, get them interested, and those storylines do um, get children interested in, in these things that they may not otherwise be interested in. And there is some value to that, to having children get interested in nature and our oceans and dolphins and all of those sorts of things. There is a value to that. Um, but it only goes so far, in my opinion, because then you're you're also not trusting the intelligence of children either, or not trying to teach them to grow beyond being interested in the need for some sort of narrative story. Um, I think there's a, there's some sort of balance to be had there, and uh, there are movies in the Disney Nature series that are better at achieving that than others, um, and Dolphin Reef is somewhere in between. Uh, after seeing this making of, it's... It, it kind of irked me that they are basically lying to the audience and saying, well, here's the story of Echo, and it's really not. It's really not the same uh, dolphin at all. Penguins was similar in that sort of way. It's not the same penguin throughout the entire movie. They're not the same animals uh, all the way through. They're in various locations throughout Antarctica in order to get the shots that they need and tell the story that they want to tell. Now, those are sort of my, my gripes about those films, but Dolphin Reef is a step up from uh, uh, Penguins. It didn't really annoy me as much. The documentaries, on the other hand, excellent. Uh, both well worth watching. So my, my verdict on Dolphin Reef is um, watch the uh, documentary Diving with Dolphins, and if you're really interested in just seeing great footage of dolphins um, and aquatic animals, if that's just something that is pleasing to you, the footage is worth watching. And the uh, narration and storyline and everything is not intrusive enough the way that it is in Penguins to sort of give you a bad experience overall. So I would say um, watch that movie as well if you, you want to see more um, or if you want to see the footage that they came up with. Um, but if you are okay with seeing that footage from a different angle, uh, seeing it from the making of side of things rather than sort of the finished product, so to speak, um, then I would advise you to skip Dolphin Reef and just watch uh, Diving with Dolphins. But it, it probably won't bother you. If you're anything like me, it's, it's a much more tolerable watch than Penguin, so I wouldn't necessarily advise you to skip it. I would say it's a maybe um, on that. And moving on to Elephant, uh, th this is the one that I probably have the best things to say about both the documentary, um, making of documentary in the footsteps of Elephant and the film Elephant. I think they are both worth a watch. My, I'll give you my verdict straight up front before I start detailing a, a little bit. 
watch them both. I think they're both fantastic, uh, worth your time. There's some anthropomorphizing, as always, in these. They give these animals names. Uh, there's a, a baby elephant named Jomo and uh, his mother and their um, relatives, but this is following a herd of elephants from the Okavango Delta region in Botswana as they uh, migrate on their annual path up to uh, the Victoria Falls area in Zimbabwe and um, Zambia. And um, they do follow this herd as they go throughout. They are the same animals, and they are tracking their behavior through this migration. And you find that out in the making of, but also the um, the elephant film itself is not nearly so intrusive about trying to layer the story on. It does tell a story. It tells a story about the migration, and there are times where... It is getting a little too story-driven for my liking, personally, and um, where it sort of uh, makes too much of an um, assumption or uh, speculation about what these animals think and what they feel. But it is by far the least offender of all of these movies at doing that, and the further that any nature documentary, whether it's made by Disney or not, gets away from that sort of behavior, the better, I think. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, and this, this does a pretty good job of just showing the animals doing what they do. It does speculate a little bit here and there about their feelings and behaviors and so on, but, uh, it also informs you a lot about actual elephant behavior and, uh, the dangers that they face and where they're going and how long it takes to get there and, you know, what the climate is like and all of this stuff that, that is entirely verifiable and not speculative at all. So, it is the best of the batch, in my opinion, by far. The making of is equally great. I think it's great to watch those in tandem. There's a lot of interesting stuff that they went through. It wasn't easy uh, to to get all of this footage. You're, you're having to stay up day and night with somebody on guard because you're in lion country and the conditions are difficult. Um, it also the, the making of documentary also highlights a uh, elephant sanctuary in Botswana that is trying to um, preserve these elephants elephants in their masses in the wild. The herd in Botswana is the uh, biggest uh, and last uh, continuous elephant herd on the planet that is able to roam their uh, ancestral range, so to speak. Uh, elephants are long-distance migratory animals, and these, these herds in the Okavango Delta in Botswana uh, are the last elephants on Earth that have the ability to range uh, annually the distances that they want and need to range. Uh, nowhere else in the world is that possible any longer. Uh, so these people are doing a bang-up job of trying to preserve that mission and trying to also get people to care about the elephants. Uh, you would think that it's one of those species because it's so big and obvious that people are just constantly helping uh, as much as they possibly can, but like many other species of animal in the world, they're, they're not. There are people that are helping, but probably not as many as you think, so it is interesting and valuable to have a document like Elephant and In the Footsteps of Elephant to um, get people interested and excited about that mission, and I think that this uh, is a quality way of... This is a movie that I think does strike the balance of Disney trying to tell a story and get families and children interested and that sort of thing, but also being informed not very anthropomorphic, not nearly as speculative. Um, it could do even less, in my opinion. I think it would be better. I don't think you need any of that at all. That's my personal opinion. But they do little enough of it in this movie that it is not nearly as big of a fender, uh, an offender as the others. Certainly not Penguins, which is... Uh, it, it's, it's hard uh, to watch, to be honest. Um, it, it just doesn't work right. Uh, but... Uh, my, my final verdict on Elephant is um, watch it, uh, go for it. I think it's really worthwhile. So that's kind of the entire bunch, the entire batch uh, of these films that came out on um, April the 3rd, all of the nature docs. Those are my general thoughts on them. I hope this was entertaining, informative, interesting. Uh, gives you an idea of which one of these, which ones of these you may want to watch or not watch, uh, or or that sort of thing, uh, and some helpful information about Disney Nature and what they do, um, and and so on. So, I hope this video is useful to you. Um, and thanks as always for watching these, giving me a, a thumbs up and comments and all that stuff um, is great. 
and uh, I will see you when I come out with some more content this week. There's a whole bunch of new Disney Plus stuff that's been released for April 10th, and I'll get right back to my schedule of uh, making videos about that stuff too. So thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you later.